I, uh, I uh, read the, uh, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to see it. This was my prop, the National Geographic, the May issue. Uh, I, I read it and I read it and reread it several times because the, uh, I, uh, I loved it. I love the simplicity of the plan. I liked the, uh, I liked the fact that I think it really reflects what a, a common ground approach needs to be. You know, so much of the dialogue and discussion gets focused on the extremes that I think we uh, we uh, we forget that there's a uh, that there's so much in the middle to, uh, to to achieve. So the beauty of this plan is it laid out five simple steps. The first thing it said was freeze agriculture's footprint. We are really close to being able to do that. The efficiency gains that are occurring in agriculture, not only in the United States, but around the world are, uh, are uh, incredible. So I think that's possible. Second thing is, you know, use the technology we have and use all the techniques. I mean, I believe we should be using organic, we should be using conventional, we should be using biotech, we should be using all our tools and, and raise yields. The third thing it says is really improve efficiency. And that's really the, uh, the beauty, I think, of the precision ag tools. I mean, we're literally at the point now where we can map every single field of crops. We can study them. We can make recommendations to, to farmers. I was just talking to scientists today from Berkeley who are doing a lot of this really exciting work in terms of, of studying the weather and, and the cool things that they're doing. Uh, water. I mean, water is the big issue in agriculture. And, and now having, you know, monitors and, and, and devices that you, you water really specifically and you don't overwater the crop, I mean, that, that's got to be so important in some of the things that you do. And obviously, you know, this year in California really points to the importance of water. So, and the other things that they recommended were change the diets. I mean, we all know, you know, to your point, and I think, Andrew, that, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of what we raise as grain goes into feed animals, and it's less efficient. Diet modification for health purposes and other reasons makes sense. And then the other piece that I thought was really cool was, uh, was the emphasis on reduction of waste. It's been estimated that about 25 percent of the food that gets produced around the planet gets wasted. And that's a combination of everything from helping to support, you know, refrigeration in some countries, to portion control, to rethink packaging. And, and, and the beauty of this was it, it, it laid it all out. And, and that's what excites me. And, and, and I think we can actually go one step further than what they put in here. If, if we do these things, by 2050, when population reaches 9.6 billion, I was doing the math on the way here, and so close your ears, Jessica, but I'll be 97 years old by, uh, by 2050. So I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about my three kids. That's what, that's what gets me up in the morning thinking about them. And I think if we do these things, we'll produce more than enough food to feed the world, but we'll produce enough food that we can really start to think about how we start taking land out of agriculture and production. For me, that's the win. That, that's really what's worth going after.